Hey, and welcome back to Apprentice Help. I'm Matt the Carpenter, and today we're gonna to be going over roof calculations. Before we start, it's important to make sure that every single time you endeavor to do this sort of calculation, you keep all of your information that you're writing down organized. So every single time that I do roof calculations, I like to do the same set of drawings. So I'll start with uh, a rectangle, which is my building. I'll draw uh, two triangles with the same hypotenuse, which is the common rafter triangle, as well as the overhang for that common rafter triangle. And I'll draw the slope triangle, which is specified by the architect on the drawings. Cool. But just starting off with these basic three triangles uh, are really gonna help you out. And make sure you label them all so you know what's what. So the most important part of figuring out your roof calculations begins with your building dimensions. Um, a lot of people say that they, they prefer to just uh, build or measure the rafters on site because they don't trust uh, this. If you have you know walls that aren't necessarily straight at the top, um, that can be a huge aggravating factor for fit later on. But just for the, the sake of theoretical calculations, we're going to assume that this is all this is all fine. So um, let's pretend that our building is uh, 20 feet wide and uh, 40 feet long. To begin, so the total span of the rafters from end to end is gonna be 20 feet. But because uh, the rafters meet up in the middle at a ridge board, you always divide that span in half. So the actual span for each rafter side is going to be 10 feet. If you come over to your common rafter triangle, 10 feet is the base unit. This is when we start to do uh, ratio and proportion with our slope triangle. So let's pretend that we have a 412 slope. So we know that our common rafter needs to be relational to the slope triangle. So the 10 is related to the 12 as the 4 is related to x over here. So all we need to do is 10 divided by 12. Oops. It's been 0 0.83. So this is the ratio between these triangles. So if I multiply 4 times 0 0.83, my height is 3.32, whoops, 3.32 feet. You can solve this using Pythagoras theorem. You can solve this and you can have your run and then do ratio proportion, whichever you like. 3.32 squared plus 10 squared equals second function square root is 10.54 feet. All right. Now we have to do the exact same thing with the overhang, which is going to be this little section in here. They'll specify on the drawings what the overhang is going to be. In this example, let's say that it's about one feet, one foot. Okay. One foot goes down here. All these triangles are related. We need to find the ratio between this smaller triangle and this bigger triangle. So one divided by 12. 0 0.083. That's the ratio for these smaller ones. 4 times 0 0.083. 0 0.33. 0 0.33 squared plus 1 squared. 1.05. So we just do Pythagoras theorem find that, Pythagoras theorem to find that, you can add these two together to get your total rafter length. So 10.54 plus 1.05 equals 11.59 feet. There's a second and much simpler way to do this. Uh, I learned it in school, probably in third year, and we the instructor kind of 
introduced it very quickly and then uh, and we didn't talk about it again but I latched onto it because it made everything so much more simple for me uh, it's the concept of slope gain <coughs> so slope gain is when you take your slope triangle <coughs> you divide 12.65 by 12 and that's going to give you your slope gain 12 is 1.054 slope gain. <clears throat> this is how easy this is. If you have your run, so that's one foot again, you multiply your run by the slope gain and it gives you the length of your rafter. 10 times 1.054 equals 10.54. 1 times 1.054 is 1.054. So you can see using slope gain is a lot quicker and uh, it's a lot simpler. <clears throat> There's a lot less room uh, for error in calculation, especially when you're doing more complex roofs and you have a lot more calculations going on. Um, using slope gain can actually speed up your calculations and reduce your error potential greatly. So I really recommend uh, doing slope gain whenever you can um, and just make sure you carry maybe an extra decimal point or two and that will increase your accuracy. So a hip. A hip is always coming off of the corner on a 45 degree angle. If it's, if it's a hip roof, it's a 45 degree angle. That's really important to remember because that, that'll help us a lot later on. So when you're doing your layout on your paper, you get, a, you get a math problem on a test or whatever, you're starting to do your calculation. So you're gonna start off once again, uh, you'll draw in your slope triangle and you'll label it. You'll draw your common rafter. And then, you know, you can draw with a different different color or whatever, but uh, I'll just do it here with the same color. And then you'll draw your hip. And I actually like to draw the hip a little bit longer, just so visually I can distinguish it, but I'm gonna label it anyways. So here's our hip, here's our common, here's our overhang, overhang. These are not gonna be the same, obviously, is because there's the, the difference between the hip and the common. So let's also draw and uh, demarcate what our building dimensions are. So let's keep it kind of simple. Let's say we're, um, we're 100 feet by 50 feet. So if we scoot that in the middle, our span is gonna be 25 feet for our common rafters, because it's half of that. Our overhang in this example, let's say it's two feet. Two feet. And then, what's our slope triangle gonna be? Let's say we are a 612, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do here is solve for my slope gain so that I can keep this as simple as possible. So I'll do Pythagoras theorem to solve this triangle 13.41. I'm just going to double check because I'm paranoid. 6 squared plus 12 squared Plus 180. Okay, 13.41. So my slope gain, I'm going to divide 13.41 by 12, is 1.118. That's my slope gain. So we can solve the common really, really quickly. 25 times 1.118. 
times 1.118, 2.236, 2.2, 2 okay, so I've already solved the common rafters and they're all gonna be basically landing in here. This is where the common rafters land. Now how do we figure out what the run of the hip is because the hip is coming on this angle down here. It's much longer than the, the common. So remember, if we're still, if we're looking down from the top, from bird's eye view, we can look at it this way. So every hip roof, the very, very last, uh, the very last rafter that comes down is actually a common. So this distance is the same as the common run. So that's gonna be 25 feet. Now if this comes at a 45 degree angle, that means that this is 25 feet as well. But all of a sudden, we have a right angle triangle here. So we come we out have, here and we say, we're still, we're still bird's eye view, so it's 25 and 25, because we wanna figure out what this dimension is on the, on the flat, on the two dimensional plane. So we have 25 here, we have 25 here. What is this dimension gonna be? So 25 squared plus, oops, plus 25 squared equals 35.355, So this distance here, we've just solved as 35.36. So that you can bring over here, and that is now the run of the hip. 35.36. The same thing goes for the projection, because this is on a flat plane. So if, the, if your common tails are coming out this way. We have some jacks in here. They're all gonna be two feet, right? So two feet out here. It's gonna come like this. It's gonna come like this. And this is gonna be your 45 for the hip as well, correct? So that's two feet and that's two feet because this one comes down here. We can build another triangle here. Shoink. Two feet, two feet. Two foot squared plus two foot squared. Eight, square root of eight is 2.82. 2.82. Okay. So now we can draw another triangle, which is gonna be the slope triangle for the hip. Hip slope. Where a common rafter has a base unit of 12, a hip rafter has a base unit of, I think it's 16.97, but we generally just say 17. The rise is the same, and we can figure this out again. 5 is 18.03. 18.03 divided by 17. Equals 1.06. What is this number? It's the hip gain. The hip gain works exactly the same as the slope gain. 35.36 times 1.06 is 37.50. 2.82 times 1.06, 2.989, we'll say three. 
So with a relatively small number of calculations, we've, able to, we've been able to solve the common rafter lengths, the overhang, the hip rafter lengths, as well as the overhang. Uh, the next thing that we'll look at is how to figure out your, Sorry, your uh, ridge board length for a, uh, for a hip roof. So previously we were talking about just for a regular gable roof, um, you would just take the total length of your building, which would be in this case 100 feet. But now because we have a hip that comes back, the one of the um, runs of a, a common rafter, all you do is you take the length of your building, the length of the building minus uh, the common, the common run, and that equals your ridge length. You take that and you add that with your overhang, whatever your overhang is, which will be another two feet, and that is your ridge board. 100 feet minus 25 feet is 75 feet, plus two feet for your overhang, 77 foot ridge board. And that will take you from here all the way out to here. So that's pretty much it for uh, doing the basic roof calculations for finding your basic uh, gable common rafters and your basic hip, uh, hip rafters. Um, I wanna say thank you very much for taking a look at the video and congratulations for making the effort to come and take the time to learn this and really kind of work through it. Uh, the more practice you get, the easier it's going to get over time. Um, but I definitely recommend reviewing it a few times because it keeps coming back up, especially through your apprenticeship training. Um, moving forward, I'm going to do another video that actually talks about the next step when you're bringing it into practice. All the points that we were able to plot today and figure out were for the theoretical line lengths, which if you take that into the real world, your measurements, or your, the boards that you cut are actually going to be off. Uh, because they haven't been adjusted for things like the width of the ridge beam or the height above your top plate um, or your subfascia boards even. So there's a number of adjustments that have to be done on the boards uh, once you get your calculations. And that's a really important thing when you actually go to build a roof. So we're gonna take a look at that in the next video in the next little while. Uh, but until that time, definitely do some more of these uh, examples and uh, yeah, and best of luck putting them together. Uh, once again, my name is Matt. Um, you can see me at Matt the Carpenter on Instagram or on YouTube, and uh, and this is my site, Apprentice Help. Thanks very much. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.